It's my uh, pleasure to introduce Mr. Milosic. Many of you know him, not least of these ambassadors in 2004, 2008. And he's going to be talking to us about the Berlin process. Um, if your phones are still on, please turn them off, or if you can't bear to do that, uh, please put them at least on silent. That's probably the most important thing I can say because it, it, it's so inter it, disturbing when things go. Um, the uh, lecture will be uh, on the record and we will uh, be having a question answer session afterwards. During that, please will you make sure you put the microphone near to your mouth and don't in your excitement wave it around Otherwise, the sound will not travel onto the internet, which we intend it to be. And anyone who wishes to go on the internet, um, you have uh, somewhere on here, there is, is the, uh, oh yes, hash ch events will get you there via Twitter. So first, if I can ask you like to, to speak for 20 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, broaden the discussion after that. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 thank you for all of you that you came here. I don't know whether you know something about the Berlin process. It's quite a secret thing uh, uh, in Britain. Despite Britain will have a, a summit of Berlin process, which is not so famous as uh, uh, Somoza uh, summit, uh, but uh, it will be I in the first uh, days, I think, on the 9th of July, it will be the summit in uh, London. Basically, what we are talking about is the Western Balkans. Uh, um, Western Balkans, you know, is uh, 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 those who, who know the place uh, uh, is a place that produces maybe more history than it can uh, swallow. And uh, despite being far away, it seems to, to be far away from us right now, Western Balkans was always an important part of the uh, let's say European, if not world history, you will remember that one of the great wars started in uh, Sarajevo, which is in the, in the Balkans again. And Balkans nowadays is again not so stable, not, uh, let's say, so uh, vibrant. Uh, it's again uh, uh, more uh, reasons, uh, we have reasons for, for uh, uh, security uh, thoughts about it uh, uh, and uh, economic viability predominantly uh, to, be, to be put on the way towards the European Union. Western Balkans is the, is the area which is consisted out of the former Yugoslavia, minus Slovenia, where I come from, minus Croatia, because Croatia also became a member of the European Union, but plus Albania, who is a candidate country, or uh, supposed to become a candidate country uh, for, the, for the European uh, Union. And, enlargement process of the European Union, it's a bit strange that we are talking here in uh, London and the London hosts the enlargement, uh, let's say, uh, summit uh, for the Western Balkan, why at the same time is uh, exiting uh, uh, European, uh, Urna, uh, uh, European Union, but uh, enlargement process was always meant to bring, to bring, to, to bring uh, economic development, uh, political, and uh, uh, political uh, prosperity, uh, democratic, uh, 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 democratic institutions, and probably, probably uh, what is the most needed but less implemented rule of law uh, in the, in the uh, region. The region is the shortest transport way between Central Europe and the southern flank of the European Union and further to the uh, Middle East, which is the region that is, <coughs> let's say, uh, uh, again in focus uh, of the world, uh, uh, but uh, for the Europe, uh, for the for the Europe, uh, uh, for sure, um, we had first first notion of Western Balkan being part of the European Union in 2003 in Thessaloniki in Greece, where the European Union summit between uh, leaders of the European Union and Western Balkan countries happened, and at that time in Thessaloniki 2003, it was passed a clear European perspective for the Western Balkans. That means that Western Balkan countries have the secured place in the European Union, which was not the case for the other 
Eastern European uh, countries, uh, Ukraine, uh, Moldova, and other countries. So they do not have a clear European Union perspective, while the Western Balkan countries were always considered to be part or to become part of the, of the uh, European uh, Union. Um, enlargement of the European Union was always in direct interest of, uh, of uh, EU. I, uh, I said before uh, why, and it was always a clear sphere of interest of the European Union uh, uh, countries, uh, predominantly for the post-war, post-Balkan war, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and, uh, and at the end uh, to incorporate this area in the, in the European Union. So from 2003, when the first, uh, uh, first uh, uh, conclusions were passed about the European perspective for the Western Balkans, where we are basically nowadays with this, with this uh, region. Um, from 2003 till nowadays, only Croatia managed to become, uh, uh, Slovenia became, of course, of course, a member of the European Union as well, but from uh, the countries of Western Balkans, only Croatia managed to become a member of the European uh, Union. Uh, in the meantime, European Union itself fell into crisis, different crises. It was a, a financial, economic crisis, terrorism, migrations, migratory crisis, Brexit happened at the same time. We, we are faced with the growth of populism, nationalism, um, Euroscepticism raised uh, in Britain as well. Uh, and all that opened questions of the future of the European Union itself, but also on the future enlargement of the uh, European, uh, European Union. And I, I would say particularly the withdrawal of the UK from the European Union, and the UK was always a prominent supporter of the enlargements of the, uh, of the uh, Union, uh, is not a good sign for the further, further and future enlargement uh, process. It just, rem uh, just remember, President of the Commission Juncker at four years ago when he started his term said that there will be no enlargement uh, at all uh, during his uh, mandate. So uh, it, mean, it, it means and it meant at that time uh, that uh, that uh, region, Western Balkan region, was slipping back to politically uh, instability, security fragility. Uh, Western Balkan sta states themselves lost the interest to perform uh, the needed reforms, uh, restructuring of the economies, political restructuring for the membership of the European Union, and basically the European Union credibility uh, in the region was seriously damaged during and after the crisis of the European uh, Union, and that opened the door for geopolitical uh, games of the extra uh, regional uh, players, and these players predominantly are Russia, Turkey, and China, who, were, who became very active in the, in, the, in the region, not just in economic uh, matters, but also in the <coughs> political and uh, security matters. So in that light, in 2014, was the only, uh, the only one who understood that because of the enlargement fatigue uh, for the Western Balkan countries and the danger of losing these countries to, 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 to the, to do, to the uh, third actors, uh, uh, which I named them, uh, only uh, Angela Merkel, Chancellor Merkel at that time understood that this region should be offered, uh, let's say, uh, 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 a new uh, engagement, new engagement to maintain, to maintain reform, uh, stabilization uh, processes, and at the end, uh, stability and security of the region, and thus, and thus Germany in 2014 launched the so-called uh, Berlin Process Initiative. And the Berlin Process Initiative basically is a diplomatic uh, initiative uh, to relaunch regional, regional uh, political, economic, infrastructural, energetic cooperation uh, and to, let's say, keep on the enlargement processes in the EU but also in the Western Balkans, uh, uh, in the Western Balkan countries, the enlargement uh, ambitions uh, uh, basically alive. All major EU countries, uh, so Germany, France, Italy, UK, and uh, others, Slovenia is also part, are part of this diplomatic initiative. The first gathering was in Berlin 2014, next year was in Vienna, then in Paris, then it was the last year in Italy, and this year it will happen in, in uh, London. In London. Uh, the aim of this uh, Berlin process is basically to strengthen the needed, uh, uh, needed uh, uh, regional cooperation among 
and between Western Balkan uh, countries to preserve their EU aspirations, uh, stability, security, boosting uh, regional connectivity, meaning infrastructure, uh, infrastructure project, energy project, and uh, liberalization of trade and services, uh, which uh, means that uh, at the end of the day, uh, the basic need uh, for the countries in the region is to implement the rule of law, because without rule of law, there is no foreign investments. Without foreign investments, there is no cash and money to realize these uh, projects. So the introduction, the implementation of the rule of law is one of the basic things uh, uh, for the Western Balkan countries uh, to, uh, to execute. The uh, Berlin process was at the same time also a tool to preserve the leading role of the European Union in the region uh, and to limit, as I mentioned before, the interference of the extra-regional uh, factors, Russia, which has strong orthodox ties in, in the region, Turkey, which, with strong uh, Ottoman legacy in some countries of the region, and uh, of course China, who became very aggressive in the economic terms, it signed already 22 agreements uh, with, the, uh, with the countries uh, in the region with, uh, uh, number, num uh, with a number of uh, infrastructural, uh, predominantly infrastructural uh, economic uh, uh, projects and, uh, and uh, interests. Let's say uh, EU, uh, EU, of course, will stay the most important partner and prime market for the Western Balkan countries, but uh, should deal with the Western Balkan countries in a completely different way, not as business as usual, like today, but uh, it should take Western Balkans as a geopolitical priority uh, if we would like, and here I mean EU and UK, if we would like to preserve influence uh, uh, in the region and uh, at the end of the day, security and stability of the region, which is in our uh, uh, our uh, uh, neighborhood uh, in our vicinity. Uh, more uh, EU retreated in the past from the, from the uh, Bal Balkans, uh, from the region, more influence got Russia, Turkey, and China, which means that abandoning uh, the Western Balkans, uh, it will seriously diminish the influence of all of us, UK and EU, uh, let's say Europe, in, in the Western Balkan uh, region. But, um, of course, European Union should, should pay much attention on the developments in the region. It should demand uh, on the path towards the European Union, to the, towards the membership of the to the European Union of these countries. Uh, it, it must demand fulfillment of all the Copenhagen criteria that are needed for, to enter the European Union. But at the same time, it should offer a really credible aim to these countries. And if these countries wish to join the European Union, at the end of the day, the European Union should present a credible, a real credible uh, 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 path of integration to the European uh, Union, which was not the case uh, since the crisis in the EU, uh, financial crisis started in 2008, and that was not the case uh, at, that, at that time. The uh, Berlin process was never meant to replace the enlargement process of the European Union. Uh, Together and along with the new uh, European Union uh, strategy for the Western Balkan, which was passed in February uh, this year, uh, is basically the most important regional mechanism uh, uh, for regional engagement, political and economic transformation, and consequently uh, EU accession of, uh, of these, uh, of these uh, countries. Um, let's say... Um, um, we need, or the countries in the region need to develop a collective regional political and economic cooperation, and uh, this would strengthen basically uh, their, uh, their path towards the European Union integration, uh, but let's say it's not realistic in today's EU political situation and situation in some of the European Union member countries, and you are familiar with, with them, that uh, uh, EU would enlarge in a very short, uh, in a very short or brief uh, time. I, I don't think so. Uh, the question of enlargement uh, of the rights and benefits of the single market. So some of the EU member countries already questioned the enlargement of the benefits of the single market. 
uh, uh, and the risks of the single market to the new to potential new member countries from the Western Balkans, especially uh, uh, regarding the free flow of uh, labor force. You are familiar that some countries, some member countries of the EU are trying to curb the, uh, the free flow of labor force and not just migration, but also a free flow of labor, labor force in the European uh, Union. At the end of the day, uh, uh, decision to enlarge is a political uh, decision. And, uh, and of course, uh, as a such, uh, there are different models of future developments in the European Union, how to enlarge. It should be, whether it should be uh, regatta principles, so one by one, countries by one. It should be convoy principles in a group, or uh, at the end of the day, uh, whether European Union will, uh, will uh, uh, develop so-called uh, diversified, uh, uh, diversified uh, uh, integration or multi-speed uh, multi Europe. But what is the state of play in the countries of Western Balkans of today? I, I, I can say that European Union, including UK, uh, has with the region 43 billion of exchange. Uh, it was uh, in to, from 2007 to 2017, it made 9 billion of investments, and uh, this will be topped this year by another billion of investments. In the region, altogether, 10 billion of investments plus 43 uh, billion of the trade exchange. So it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite a, a significant exchange with the, with the region. Uh, region, despite some better economic science, uh, the growth on average is 3.2% uh, <coughs> uh, in uh, last year, but it's still considerably lower than it was pre-crisis uh, times when it was up to 7%, up to 7%. Uh, so uh, despite this growth, the region is still very fragile, uh, uh, feels very fragile economic situation. Uh, politicians in the region basically they did not do uh, substantial and needed economic and structural uh, reform regarding the foreign investments, uh, uh, strengthening the econo economies, uh, <coughs> strengthening the democratic processes, security uh, 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 processes. Basically, they were uh, focused on uh, short-term uh, objectives. Uh, also, the European Union probably had a wrong policy betting everything on the strongmen in the region and neglecting the democratic processes, the development of the democra democratic processes, civil society, free, med free media, and as I said before, also uh, implementation of the rule of law in the, in the, in the country. A serious problem of the region is, uh, is a demo demographic uh, trend. A lot of young people, all of them practically, who has the possibility to leave the region, uh, they would uh, live predominantly to the countries of the, of the uh, Western Europe and not to the uh, Ankara or uh, Moscow. So uh, the attractiveness of the West is much, much higher or uh, is, is the highest uh, in comparison with the other uh, potential regional uh, uh, player. Um, Western Balkans was and is still lacking behind economically, politically and in security terms. It does uh, desperately need a uh, new developmental boost. And since 2003, there were basically, uh, so, so since Thessaloniki promises of the EU perspective, there was, there was practically no progress, just stagnation uh, in, 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 in the region. How, um, how questionable were the politi policies of the regional leaders uh, Show, can show us the, the, the level of development of these countries, of the countries of the Western Balkans. You should know that countries of the Western Balkans are today probably the poorest countries in, the, in, in uh, Europe. They are below 40% of the average, uh, of the developmental average of the GDP of the 28 uh, EU. And, uh, and, and they are even poorer than the countries that are the poorest in the European Union. And the poorest countries in the Euro, meaning in the GDP terms, are Romania, Bulgaria, and Croatia. They are about 50 to 60 percent of the uh, GDP average uh, of the EU 20, uh, 28. These data show us that practically for the countries that are outside the European Union, in Europe, but outside the European uh, Union, uh, not talking here of uh, Britain, but uh, the countries that are interested to enter the European Union, for that countries it's practically impossible to uh, do the developmental catch-up with the EU countries if they would not join 
the, the uh, European uh, Union. Um, consequently, because of this poorness of the, the countries of the Western Balkans, uh, there was more and more growing uh, and strong opinion in the new, in the new member, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the present member countries of the European Union, that new members can join only when they do uh, needed developmental steps towards the convergence with the EU. Uh, so it means convergence to the EU economic and social uh, developmental uh, uh, average. Um, otherwise, they would pose a serious threat uh, or uh, uh, they would be a factor of destabilization uh, for the present member countries uh, in terms of the uh, social, economic and tax dumping. Uh, and the competitiveness uh, of the single markets is so strong that it could destroy unprepared markets of these new member countries, thus causing a new migratory flow from the region, uh, predominantly labor flow, uh, to the existing member countries with all the political consequences, populism and all that one, in the present member, member uh, countries, which means that uh, the enthusiasm for the further enlargement is, is, is uh, not so strong that it might, we might uh, wish. Uh, political situation, of course, influences the economic growth uh, and uh, economic stability and social environment. Uh, as I said, Western Balkan is, uh, is situation there is not so stable. Uh, it is worsening of the uh, internal political situation in some countries, and it is worsening also in the terms of bilateral relations between the countries of the Western Balkans. Uh, there is a dialogue between them that is not really, uh, let's say, uh, uh, favorable for the regional, regional uh, cooperation. Um, nationalism is growing in some countries with, uh, uh, especially with retreatment of the Western countries uh, during the crisis, uh, EU and US were, let's say, pulling out from the region, Nationali nationalism uh, grew uh, significantly. Uh, a clear, uh, and uh, a clear structural reform path would be demanded from the political leaders in the region, which means that they should, po they should uh, make a, a Euro-Atlantic uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, pass a real priority, which means reform priority uh, for, the, for the political agenda uh, in uh, the region. Four common challenges for the Western Balkan countries are uh, post-conflict renewal, post-communist transition, economic, social and political reforms for market competitiveness, deeper integration into Euro-Atlantic institutions and problems the region is facing uh, are ethnic and religious tensions, corruption, organized crime, mass migration from the Middle East, very heavy problem in the terms of uh, political stability of the region, political chronism, low media freedom, judiciary independence, high unemployment, uh, youth brand drain, which I mentioned, but the biggest one is uh, basically no rule of law implementation and in some cases also state capture. Uh, and uh, these problems are quite serious and the enlargement process together with the Berlin process is meant to, <coughs> to, to focus uh, the countries of the region on these areas uh, 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 on the path uh, towards the membership of the European uh, Union. Uh, let's be frank, there will be no shortcuts, uh, uh, no fast EU accession probably. Uh, the process will be demanding and, uh, long, and reasonably long. Uh, but it can become again the path towards European Union. It can become again uh, unattractive for Western Balkan political elites and for the public uh, opinion. And uh, the set, uh, because the set criteria and uh, reforms that are needed uh, for the membership of the European Union will have to be uh, implemented. The credibility to do all this reform, the credibility and earnest possibility is completely on the countries of the on the countries of Western uh, Balkans. Uh, um, I mentioned the new European Union uh, enlargement strategy. It was passed in February. Slovenia was very, very active. Uh, we basically managed to put the Western Balkan uh, countries on the European agenda uh, again. And this, why I'm mentioning this new strategy, because it's basically based on the Berlin process, uh, process uh, aims. Um, all the countries will got, uh, let's say, action plans, uh, and the focus, <coughs> the focus of uh, this new uh, European Union enlargement. Uh, some of them they would 
they don't want to call it enlargement in the European Union, but uh, uh, Western Balkan strategy. The focus is on regional cooperation, uh, uh, good neighborly relations, uh, by solving the bilateral uh, problems, a uh, very important one, uh, regional uh, infrastructure, <coughs> digitalization of economies, fight against corruption, organized crime and terrorism, uh, working market economy, social security, and uh, uh, preventing uh, nationalisms and uh, populism. So all this is in the program of the new enlargement strategy. Uh, of course, on the other side, the European Union will have to prepare itself for the next enlargement in the institutional terms, and but also in the fin financial, uh, financial terms. And uh, post-Brexit debate on the future of the European Union will, will for sure uh, have to embrace also the debate on the future on the future uh, enlargement. Uh, we had, uh, we had SOFIA summit, first summit European Union Western Balkan countries after 2003 in SOFIA last month. month uh, it, was developed, it was devoted to the, uh, to the things of particular, uh, particularly um, uh, 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 practical cooperation uh, in the fields of uh, uh, transport, uh, connectivity, transport, energy, uh, use agenda, employment, but I, I, I noticed that in the countries of Western Balkans, a certain uh, disillusion of this, uh, of this summit because a strong political message uh, from their perspective was not, uh, was not given from that, uh, uh, from that uh, summit. That, that means that in June, European Council, uh, where we will have important conclusions on the next enlargen, enlargement regarding opening negotiations with Macedonia or Albania, will be uh, uh, very, very important for the credibility of the enlargement process on the enlargement agenda of the European, of the European Union uh, again. And here we come to the London uh, summit. It comes uh, right after the European Union Council in June. If European Council in June will not have a strong message about the enlargement, then also the uh, July uh, Berlin summit in London uh, will be probably under and uh, the impressions of the June European uh, uh, Council. Uh, the, the Berlin process in London will focus mainly on the economic stability uh, questions, connectivity, bilateral issues, and security of the, of the region. And main message will be that despite the exi exiting of the European Union, UK and EU can collaborate uh, good in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the region. It's, it's strange, again, that it's in London, and you want, uh, you, you, do you know when the last prime minister were, were, was in the region, uh, British prime minister? It was in 1980, I think, uh, by uh, Margaret Thatcher, uh, who she, she paid the visit in the, in the, in the, in the region. I think she was meeting with the opposition. Yes, yeah, well, I, I don't know when so she, maybe I don't yeah, know. she was, I, my, my, my data is that she was prime minister at that, uh, at that time. So. What I'm saying, we have two processes. One is enlargement process, again, with the Western Balkans. The other is Berlin processes. Berlin processes, to my experience, from all the paperwork, a lot of declaration, there is less political will, particularly in the region, to fulfill all that, that uh, things that are agreed in the Berlin process. So the focus probably in the future will go into the enlargement processes of, process of the European Union. But nevertheless, it's a useful tool. Uh, even even uh, the Berlin uh, uh, process. Uh, uh, for the end, I would like to conclude that we are in front of two questions, and questions are credibility or instability. Uh, credibility from both sides, I mentioned it, from the Balkan countries, more credible uh, reform path uh, towards the European Union, more credit, uh, credible priority uh, uh, pa uh, reform uh, priority in the countries of the Western Balkans. On the other side, more credible uh, 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 end game for the countries of Western Balkans. So when they can join uh, European Union from the part of the Euro uh, from the part of the uh, European uh, Union, uh, European Union should not should should uh, should uh, should uh, uh, not pretend anymore that uh, uh, enlargement is going on, but basically without a, a, a credible end game for the countries. Uh, that are interested for that. You know that the big debate in the European Union to set or not to set up the date of the enlargement and uh, uh, particularly uh, France, French president publicly said that it's pr practically impossible to enlarge before the European Union uh, is uh, reshaping itself, uh, its 
poorly functioning with 27, how it will function with 32, uh, he said. So these are open, open uh, questions, but credibility is needed from the both sides, predominantly from the European Union, if uh, European Union would like to preserve the influence in competition with the third actors, and this is Russia, Turkey, and China in, 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 in the region. Uh, this is about the Berlin process uh, that you will host here in London in connection with the alignment processes. Well, thank you for that uh, profoundly depressing analysis. <laughs> well, it's uh, not depressing, it's, it's realistic. I it is, no, I'm, I'm sure it is realistic. I, I wouldn't question that for a moment. Um, I recall when the, the, president, the then president of Macedonia was here, he gave a fairly similar sort of picture, but his picture was impatience with the, with the European Union. And I suppose that you were right to emphasize that the question of when these countries might have a real prospect of joining is critical for the, uh, 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 for the whole, whole, whole idea, because if they don't think they're going to join, then, uh, um, Henry, you said it, not me, that was not meant to be, that's not a yeah. question, it was more of a statement, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I mentioned credibility. Uh, of course, the countries in the region are impatient. They would like to have a date when to enter, but it's not like this, you know. Uh, part of the guilt is on the countries. Basically, I, I tried yes. to explain that there was not, the, I, I can say they were not serious enough. I can understand from the political point of view, it's very difficult for a government uh, that has four years in front of it, it to do the painful reforms and not knowing where the end game will be. But, yes. but if uh, uh, they would like to join, they, they will have to be aware that they cannot join unprepared. That's the problem because so they very, will cause- Very powerful reasons you yes. explained. Yeah, the, because they will cause a lot of problems for them and for, for, for those who are already in the, uh, in the uh, European Union. But it's, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, completely uh, clear that the uh, European Union uh, was pretending for a long time about this uh, enlargement, was not, uh, let's say, uh, enlargement was not seriously on the agenda. Now we put it, at least in paper in February, again on the agenda. And uh, in the meantime, the, the, uh, this area can, be, can, can become a test ground for the future multipolar world. You know. uh, this is a clear doorstep of the European Union, a clear uh, 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 geographical uh, inter area of interest of European Union, which because of lack of activities of the European Union became uh, became uh, interesting area for the third actors, uh, Russia, China and, and uh, Turkey, which are challenging the leading role of the European Union in the, in the area. Um, in, in that context, can you say how if effective that, you can see as a disruptive challenge, that would be serious but uh, uh, Russia and Turkey are perhaps not well placed to pr produce a, a more stable and more uh, uh, prosperous Balkans? Well, I tried to pr pr picture through my, my dispose that serious alternative out of the European Union for the countries of Western Balkans cannot be found. Uh, no. uh, uh, what happened with the countries uh, that remained outside of the European Union in terms of the GDP uh, growth, it's very clear. Yes. Those who entered the European Union were, went, went uh, much strongly uh, in economic terms, in the GDP terms, in the growth, further than the countries that remained outside in, uh, of the, in the region, outside of the European Union. I doubt very much that uh, all the actors, uh, foreign actors uh, mentioned uh, can, re can present uh, a uh, substantial alternative uh, for the European Union. Uh, European Union is still, uh, 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 let's say, a factor that for the uh, economies that are not so developed uh, the, than, the, than the Western, de the Western uh, economies uh, uh, are of vital importance with the grounds that uh, European Union still, still offers in terms of uh, uh, of neglecting regional uh, disbalances, disba disbalances in the, in the development uh, terms. So I do not see a significant alternative to the European Union. Uh, many of them in the region, they still think that they can choose between, I don't know, Russia, China, and European Union. I don't know, I'm not sure that this, uh, this is a realistic uh, chaos, idea. Yeah. Can I have questions from the floor? Please would you, if with, uh, Questions, would you identify yourself 
and uh, put your hand up for a microphone. Thank you. It's always that unnerving moment when no hands go up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, my name is Gabriel Pautus. I'm from the Economist Intelligence Unit. Um, uh, State Secretary, uh, I what I was wondering what sort of advice would you give to countries in the Western Balkans about the importance of resolving their disputes and potential conflicts, for, for example, Serbia and Kosovo and, and others, in the light of Slovenia's own difficulties with Croatia over the years in, 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 the, in, in disputes not being resolved before they both joined the European Union? And perhaps the second question I could ask, uh, again relating to Slovenia and the EU, Slovenia used to present itself as being a kind of bridge between the EU and the Western Balkans because of its previous ex-Yugoslavia experience. To what extent, I mean, the way you're speaking today, 14 years after Slovenia joined, is very much from an EU perspective. I mean, does Slovenia still have a special role or is it now become very much integrated in the EU and looking at things from the EU perspective? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> uh, you mentioned bilateral issues and problems in the region. We strongly advise that uh, the, the countries try to resolve the bilateral questions. There are now in the new e European Union strategy, also on the basis of the Slovenian-Croatian dispute. I'm not, I don't know whether you are all familiar of this relatively, uh, for the world, relatively minor uh, dispute, but uh, uh, we had uh, border dispute, we had arbitration. And, uh, you know, uh, arbitration is, is a valid one between Slovenia and Croatia, and we want to put it aside. So we accept the results, and we want to put it. We, are very, we feel very sorry that Croatia does not accept it. Uh, why? Because you remember then we uh, set up uh, the resolution mechanism for the border dispute between Slovenia and Croatia. At the same time, Slovenia and Croatia established so-called border briuni process for the reconciliation in the, in, the, in the region. We wanted to demonstrate that the two countries from the region can resolve the bilateral issues in a normal civilized way, and thus setting up the path of resolution of bilateral problems also for the other countries in the region. Now, of course, this is under the constraints because Croatia does not want to implement the arbitration agreement. Again, we are very sorry. We, thi we think that this is very bad for Croatia and, 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 and Slovenia. Uh, because together we, do, we could do, as a member of the European Union, much more for the countries in the region and vice versa for the European Union roles in the region. Uh, that was the idea uh, of the resolution of the dispute between Slovenia and Croatia, which is not resolved, unfortunately, yet. But the idea is to do much more together with Croatia for the stabilization processes and the European path of the countries of the European Union. Now, because of the stacked arbitration, we are prevented, unfortunately, uh, uh, for, 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 for that, that uh, thing. Slovenia, you remember in history, in the first years of independence, uh, uh, wanted to get out from the region, uh, simply because the label of the region was not very, the trademark of the region was not very, let's say, very good. And that's why we wanted to, we had very clear uh, aims when we got the independence, this is to join the European Union and NATO, where we always belong. We were always part, let's say, of the Western uh, uh, civilization. We've got that. We are much more self-confident. The economic situation, let's touch the wood in Slovenia, is, is very good. And we think that we have to do much more for the countries, for the region, and for the countries of the region. Uh, do not forget Slovenia is one of the most uh, of the leading uh, investors in the, in the Western Balkans, uh, 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 very strongly uh, pre present there, uh, that we have very close uh, political ties with all the countries practically, uh, and uh, uh, we see our role. Uh, yes, you mentioned uh, that we are in between the countries of uh, uh, Southeast Europe or Western Balkans and the European Union. Yeah, we see the, our role as. Uh, I mean, we are small countries. If we can do somewhere is there, there uh, that we, we are sincerely uh, see our role in boosting, speeding up the stability in the region. Yeah, for sure. So we are not afraid anymore of uh, being, uh, let's say, uh, more active in the, in the region. 
Thank you. Uh, Joanna Hansen. I am the executive director of an NGO based in Kosovo called New Perspectiva, and we deal with issues related to intercommunity and interstate normalization of relations. Um, perhaps I could just correct you about British Prime Ministers. Theresa May was in Macedonia last month, yeah. and of course when Tony Blair went in 1999, it was his remarks on the uh, necessity of enlargement of the EU, which brought Bulgaria and Romania in a bit quicker yeah. than they would have done. You are right about it. <laughs> um, I have two questions. In both the strategy for um, the Western Balkans and generally in the EU now, especially in the normalization talks, the word reconciliation is continually used, the need for reconciliation between the Balkan states. You haven't mentioned this. Does Slovenia uh, talk to its Balkan neighbors about the need to deal with the past? And I don't like the word reconciliation, but, but reconciliation. Um, because you know, we believe that's paramount to being able to move forward. And secondly, I don't think you've really mentioned the United States. I know they're not part of the EU. What do you think the role of the US is in the Balkans now, and, and especially its leverage? Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, yes. Um, uh, reconciliation, I mentioned that uh, uh, we tried to set up with Croatia so-called Berlin, Briuni border process. Briuni and Berda are places in Slovenia and Croatia. And we made uh, the arbitration uh, agreement for resolution of our border problems. At the same time, Slovenia and Croatia decided to play much more active role in the Balkans. Uh, specially designed border Bruni process for the reconciliations, for bringing all the presidents of the, uh, of the former uh, Yugoslav countries plus Albania uh, uh, around the same table to talk openly about the problems in, in, the, in the region. And this process is still going on. The last was in Macedonia, in Skopje, I think in May. Uh, uh, well, So uh, it's true that it's not non-executive process because uh, there are no prime ministers, but there are presidents but it serves as a, let's say, reconciliation dialogue or open dialogue about the, uh, about the uh, problems uh, that uh, uh, are still very alive uh, between the countries in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the region. You were right about the British Prime Ministers, uh, uh, especially about uh, Kosovo, uh, Kosovo in, 99, in uh, uh, Prime Minister Blair. Um, um, uh, the second question was just to remind me. United States, uh, yeah. Uh, United States, basically, you know that uh, any kind of resolution of problems, uh, uh, despite the leading role uh, of the European Union, at least should have it, uh, the new external action service and Mogherini should have it, but uh, without a close co collaboration with the Americans, because some countries in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the region sees uh, importance of the Americans uh, being present in the region more than Europeans, so uh, the, 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 the role of the states is, uh, uh, I think, uh, important there. Uh, I mentioned that the United States were pulling out uh, from the together with the European Union. Now uh, I'm much more uh, optimistic uh, because uh, according, uh, at least to, 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 to our knowledge, is United States is uh, again, uh, see, see, again see this uh, region uh, as an uh, as, uh, interesting uh, uh, area which should not be, uh, let's say, neglected uh, anymore. And they are step by step, uh, they are returning uh, uh, to the region. The interest of the United States is returning. Despite uh, the, the world's uh, big uh, uh, problems and summits, uh, uh, but states, according to my knowledge, uh, they became much more attentive to the region than they used to be, let's say, uh, five years, uh, five years ago. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, State Secretary uh, Domagorogul from the Croatian Embassy. Uh, just a short remark on uh, arbitration. Um, <coughs> for the other side to be heard, uh, it is known uh, why Croatia has withdrawn from the arbitration process uh, due to contamination of the process that prompted the Croatian Parliament to unanimously adopt the decision to withdraw from the uh, process. At the same time, the Croatian government has uh, declared its uh, commitment 
to seek to engage with the Slovenian side and to seek a bilateral solution uh, to the problem and is committed to work uh, with the new Slovenian government uh, to that aim. Uh, at the same time, I'd like to um, uh, also stress that we share uh, most of your viewpoints and your concerns regarding the Western Balkan uh, region. And I would like to take an opportunity to ask you a question on uh, how do you see the impact of uh, yesterday's good news from uh, um, Macedonia on, um, uh, on the outcome of uh, the forthcoming summits and the willingness of uh, those in the EU who are uh, reluctant about uh, closer integration of Western Balkan countries. Thank you. Our Croatian colleague did the homework and uh, reminded us about uh, Everything, but I was not talking who was right in the arbitration. I wanted to point out that uh, because of precisely what you said, we are now uh, we have constraints uh, to work together in the in the bulk, which is a pity. I feel very sorry. I negotiated the arbitration agreement, and I know uh, what we were doing, and we were trying together with Croatia to do much more work in the Balkans that we are pre unfortunately we are prevented. Of. You are right. Uh, more positive news, optimistic news, ju not just to have. Uh, uh, like you said, a very um, um, uh, 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 negative uh, uh, experience uh, about the region. Uh, let's hope that this good news will, uh, will, will last. Uh, uh, there are good news. Uh, still, we have some uh, political, uh, let's say, uh, uh, mechanisms to pass through, referendums, uh, acceptance in both countries. Uh, not easy part of the uh, process, but uh, I'm, I would like to be optimistic. In, th in that case, I, I would uh, say that European Union should take this uh, uh, into serious consideration and act uh, accordingly with the opening of the negotiations, let's say, in the June European, uh, European Council, because otherwise uh, it would be very strange that a uh, country uh, like Macedonia uh, did everything to negotiate a positive solution and there w wouldn't be a reply from the other side, from the EU, EU, uh, EU side. I hope that EU will take this uh, into serious consideration. Slovenia, for sure, we will support the opening of the negotiations with Macedonia. Yeah. I don't, didn't wish to be too depressing um, because I think there is actually a great well of affection in this country for, for the Western Balkans in in general, yeah. um, uh, a very long standing. But th so there's another question in there. Uh, as well as being a member of Chatham House, I'm an election observer. Um, it, just following on from the last point you made, from Slovenia's point of view, when would you like to see the next round of accession actually happen? When would you like to see the target date happen? And do you believe that this will be a multi country accession? Or do you believe that the, it should be open for single countries or pairs of countries uh, to join? Um, do you believe that the process could be frustrated by one or more countries not um, moving as quickly as, as perhaps others would like? Well, the countries in the region, uh, uh, when the Berlin process was launched, they were very afraid, uh, uh, you know, that this will be a uh, creating a group of countries, uh, so-called a convoy principle, that they will be forced in a group to enter the European Union and that would, let's say, mean that uh, the most advanced should wait for the, for the uh, last one. They were very afraid of uh, that one. Uh, now, uh, since the uh, European Union Balkan uh, strategy in, in February, passed in February, in strategy is a clear uh, mechanism that says that everybody who fulfills all the criteria should uh, progress uh, towards the European, which means that th this is individual uh, principle. Uh, uh, Slovenia supports individual principles. Everybody should be judged by uh, its own uh, merits. But uh, let's say polit politically, realistically, uh, we should know that uh, at least in some countries, uh, every enlargement process has to take the referenda uh, decision. And now uh, you have uh, some big countries uh, uh, and uh, one should always question uh, whether uh, we should put uh, on the referenda agenda uh, six times for six, let's say, countries or not, whether this is realistic or not. I, I, I really and sincerely wish that everybody who fulfills the criteria, who is capable and who wish, who wish 
with the support of the public opinion to enter the European Union should be put into the political uh, process. But I said in my, uh, my uh, presentation that basically today is difficult to say, to say uh, what kind of principles will be used. We have a formal principles that are very clear individual principle. We have a political judgments uh, connected with the, with the referendums for the, for the enlargement and, the, uh, and the, uh, at the end of the day uh, this is a political uh, decision when and up. Nobody would like to speak about the dates. This is one of the problems in the Uni European Union. You remember that that uh, uh, president of the commission, uh, when he said four years ago, no enlargement, then last year he said uh, 2025, and then there was a lot of misunderstanding in the European uh, Union. So uh, I would put that, uh, uh, and I said, credibility for the process is on the part of those who would like to, to enter, and if they sincerely wish to enter, they will do utmost and they will do as soon as possible to enter and to say about what year, we would like to see as soon as possible, I can tell <coughs> you very freely, but to say what year, it depends how the reform pass will, will, will go on in the countries because they have a lot of work to do still. <coughs> we, we, are, we are now on the beginning of the process, of the opening of the negotiations for Macedonia and uh, Albania. Uh, Montenegro and uh, Serbia, they are already opening. But from opening to the closing, it's a quite demandable, <laughs> demandable process, basically of transformation of the whole society. And we experienced that during our process. Uh, from part of Slovenia, as soon as uh, they do uh, transformation, we are ready for, for that. Yeah. Can I ask a particular question about uh, <coughs> the one country in the Balkans, we have not, the uh, Western Balkans? not mentioned so far, and that, that is Serbia. You rightly began your presentation by saying there were too many histories in, in uh, the Western Balkans, and this was an obstacle. Uh, Serbia is also the country most uh, uh, <coughs> liable to fall for um, mendacious songs from, from, from Russia. Do you, uh, are you, do you have a sense of the way things within Serbia are developing towards an actual commitment to, to uh, place itself? Meaning, I said, I said twice. Maybe that's not a fair question. Uh, yeah. No, no, it's okay. I said twice uh, in my expose that basically country, candidate countries, they should expre express clearly yes. the wish where they would like uh, to go. Yes. If uh, the, the European Union is the aim of these countries, then we do expect uh, uh, that everything should be done in that, in that aim. Uh, I know what you were trying uh, well, to that's say. Uh, is, is a necessary step, obviously. Uh, but I, I just some, wondered... Probably at some point it will become uh, uh, the decision. Uh, uh, this does not mean that, uh, meaning the countries are the members of the European Union and uh, uh, not entering the current situation uh, between EU, NATO and, and Russia, not entering the current situation. There are countries in the European Union that are also developing the ties, economic ties with Russia. And, uh, nobody prevents that one, which would be very, very clear. But in the political terms, I said uh, specifically that the, that the leaders of the countries in the region, they will have to do, uh, if they sincerely would like to join the, the EU, some of them also NATO, the transatlantic agenda as a number one priority. Yes, and that, that is in our interest. With all consequences in their policy. Yes. But sometimes people need persuading. Absolutely, but this is on the leaders of the countries of the, of the region. We cannot tell uh, someone what uh, no, no, he has to no, do. I yeah. understand that. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, I think, will be your final question. Hi, my name is Charlie Austin. As well as being a Chatham House member, I'm in the military. Um, you mentioned corruption as one of the major issues in the region. Um, how do you see corruption as a region being tackled uh, in order to progress economically and politically? Yeah. Well, corruption is not problem of the region. Probably is problem I even in the western part of the European Union. Uh, it, it, in every part, but depends how you tackle the corruption. And obviously, one of the main uh, uh, aims of the Berlin process in connection with the enlargement strategy 
is to how to fulfill bigger investments projects in the region. This is infrastructural projects. And if you would like to bring a foreign capital, uh, foreign private investments combined with the public investments, obviously uh, uh, it was defined that uh, uh, cor corruption in the region is a major obstacle of that. But to put in a broader term, this is rule of law. Uh, from the independent uh, uh, judicial system uh, to the uh, functioning of the public administration. So that's why basically the aim number one of the Berlin process is the rule of law, the implementation of rule of law. This tackles also the corruption in, in, in the, in the uh, region. Um, uh, that's why I said that there, is, there was a lot of uh, 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 goodwill in the paperwork, but uh, then uh, when you come to the very uh, specific uh, implementation, uh, there is less uh, goodwill to, in, to implement. But one of the both processes, uh, uh, enlargement processes of the European Union, process of the European Union, and the Berlin process, the uh, demand number one is a starting implementation of the rule of law in, in that uh, in that countries, including corruption. State Secretary, thank you very much for giving us such a, a clear exposition. I think that's an ideal preparation for, for, the, for, the, uh, <clears throat> for the meeting here in, in London and a, an illustration of, of the, 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 not just the problems, but also I think that there is, it's wrong to say there is no hope. It's just very complicated, and, uh, but it's necessary that there should be progress in all our interests, it seems to me anyway. So thank you very much. Could we put together? Thank you for. Thank you.